is Hani Ellers. I'm a researcher in the Hague University of Applied Sciences working in the Technology for Health Research Group. In our university, we work on research projects together with our students, who help us generate new ideas and collaborate with us on conducting research. With the supervision of our experienced researchers and the ingenuity and the energy that the students bring, we manage to acquire great results. In contrast to technical universities, our university specializes in applied research projects, which have direct impact on society. One such example is the Care Ring project, where we constructed the first prototype of a system that helps dementia patients by simulating an interactive phone call from a close family member. This call helps improve their mood and put them at ease. An advanced version of this system is currently undergoing clinical trials. Another interesting project we worked on is a project that tested voice-activated smart devices with senior citizens. The idea of this project was to test whether Dutch-speaking seniors are able and willing to use these voice-activated smart devices in order to introduce affordable home-automated elements. The results highlighted an initial digital divide that stopped seniors from attempting to use such devices. However, once introduced to these devices, they can use them quite successfully. The next step in this project is to try to bridge the digital divide so more seniors can enjoy the benefits of such systems. Today, I'm happy to walk you through another project we have been working on for the last few years. Come with me to have a look at the Smart Teddy project. It is well known by now that the increasing average age of the population in the European Union is placing a lot of pressure on care facilities for senior citizens. There is a strong effort to help seniors to live in their own homes for a longer period of time. This is a great initiative since the outcome benefits all those involved. The idea of the Smart Teddy project is to offer a teddy bear-like home companion. This is based on a previous project where a robotic baby seal was offered to people suffering from dementia, which proved quite successful. The Smart Teddy goes a step further by using the interaction with the senior to collect data about their well being. The Teddy uses this data to detect short term dangers such as a fall or a fire, as well as the long term problems such as a decline in the senior's physical or mental abilities. The project went through a long iterative process that so far involves eight different student projects. Today, I will walk you through this journey to show you the process of how we conduct research in our group. Looking at the literature, we found out that seniors would often like to have pets, but they cannot because of their advanced age. Therefore, we decided to give our system the form of a dog or a cat even though we still call it a smart teddy. The first project constructed a proof of concept prototype. In that prototype, we used a dog which could move its tail and bark to offer some interaction with the senior citizens. Additionally, it can also use sensors to detect gas, smoke, or loud noises indicating danger. In such a situation, the teddy would send a message to a caregiver to check on the senior. Other sensors were able to detect light, sound, and touch to try to track the daily activities of the senior and see how they are doing in general. We constructed the first prototype using a mini controller, servos, and sensors, and were successful to have that system work and collect some data. By now you are probably thinking about privacy issues associated with tracking people's activities. This is a legitimate concern and therefore, in parallel to the first prototype, we conducted a study with another group of students where we looked at, first, the data that can be collected by sensors, what kind of data caregivers think is useful to monitor. Third, we looked into the GDPR regulation to check that uh, we are not breaking any laws. We sure don't want to do that. We also talked to the senior citizens themselves and ask them what data are they willing to share in order to assist in providing them care. From the results from these two studies, we produced a second prototype where we decided to reduce the amount of sensors in order to satisfy any privacy concerns raised during our first field study. 
Basically, what we were trying to do is to detect daily activities, what the literature calls anomalies, then identify which of these anomalies gives us an indication of the quality of life. The final goal being, of course, to automate this process. We only used three sensors. First, a sound sensor that only measured the sound level in the room. Second, we used a motion sensor that detected if someone was moving around in the room. Third, uh, an accelerometer that measures whether someone is actually moving the teddy bear itself. In order to test this prototype, we placed it in the home of a senior citizen for a week to collect real-life data. At the same time, we asked the participant to keep a diary of his daily activities. Once the study ended, we used the diary that the senior kept to know the activities that the senior was engaged in throughout every hour of the day, as you can see in this figure. Then we can map this data that we collect from the sensors like this. Now, for example, we can clearly see on the left side of the figure when the, se when the senior is sleeping that the data shows no movement in the room and almost no sound. Now, having a regular sleeping cycle is one of the important indicators of a good quality of life. As you can imagine, if you are waking up at night because of pain or problem sleeping, that this can be a sign of a potential problem. The next step is to use the sensor data to detect other activities throughout the day and then use this information to estimate the quality of life. The students working on this prototype documented their work in a scientific article which was published in the 2019 Conference of Ambient Intelligence in Rome. As a result of their success, the school sponsored their trip to the conference where the students presented their findings. This for them was a unique and pivotal experience in their education. Again, in parallel to building the second prototype, we also conducted a second privacy study that tackled some of the shortcomings of the first one. One problem with the first study was that the students interviewed seniors who were already living in a care home about their opinions on privacy. Since around the clock monitoring is the norm in these facilities, this influenced the opinions of the people that were interviewed. Another issue was that the questions contained technical terms such as a thermosensor or a motion sensor which were difficult for the seniors to understand. Therefore, in this study, we interviewed seniors still living independently in their own homes and only used simple to understand words. Findings showed that the seniors would like to share some information if it is for their own good. However, some private information they were willing to only share with family members and not with doctors. Other medical information they were only willing to share with doctors and not with family members. Most interestingly, since seniors do not have a direct connection with the researchers, they were not really willing to share much information with us. We learned from this study that we would like to have, uh, if we would like to have seniors participate in our research, and allow us to gather some of uh, their data that we will need to establish a connection with the seniors directly in order to gain their trust. The next study we conducted was based on the experience from the second prototype um, where we studied the, trying to estimate the quality of life automatically. From the literature, we found a way to measure the quality of life for people with early onset of dementia by using the so-called Dementia Quality of Life form, where simply by answering a list of questions, uh, we can get a quality of life score. What we did was look through the questions in the form and try to identify these questions that can be automated using sensor data. We then asked a group of people to fill in the form for a week to represent their quality of life levels and then try to see if we can, by only using the questions that we can automate, how close we could come to the quality of life measurements that we would have from the full form. From this study, we were able to make some model that would try to estimate the measurements from the complete form. However, unfortunately, since we used students to participate in this study, this resulted in some unrepresentative data. So, the conclusion was that we would need to repeat this study 
with participants from the target group in order to get more representative data. A pivotal challenge we are currently facing is trying to identify the activities from the senior citizens from the sensor data. This part of the project still requires more work and we still need to collect more data and try to use that data to design some recognition algorithms. Currently, we have three projects running in parallel designing the third prototype of the Smart Teddy. Two of these projects focus on the Teddy itself, which in this iteration of the project has been split into two parts, the Teddy Bear itself and the basket that houses the teddy bear when it needs to rest and charge its batteries. For this version, we included a large collection of sensors to collect data which may be useful for modeling activities. The teddy itself will have a simple microcontroller that collects the data from these sensors and then transmit them using Bluetooth to the base station. Now the base station has a powerful PC that is able to process the data and analyze it in order to identify behaviors. For example, the base station will also use a camera in order to identify visitors to check if the, if, uh, the senior is having some companionship, which is another indicator for the quality of life. Although for now we may collect some data with the permission from the senior citizen to help us develop the system, the idea is that in the final system, all the processing will be done inside the teddy and none of the private information of the senior is going to be saved or sent anywhere outside the home. All the data will be processed locally in the house of the senior citizen and then immediately deleted. The only information that will be sent outside is the calculated quality of life score and a warning in case of a potential emergency such as a fire. Of course, the project doesn't stop here. We expect a lot of iterations where we will start using the sensor data to model activities with the help of our partners in the data science research group. We are then going to test the full system before going to a final product. Of course, we also expect some iterations in these steps where we will need to refine our prototypes, refine our models, and try to improve how we measure the quality of life and see how our system can aid the seniors in their daily life with the cooperation of our students. For more information on the progress of this project and other projects from our group, please visit the page for our Technology for Health research group. Thank you very much for joining us today.